buckle up boys and girls because we have to have a huge talk because I learned something huge this weekend. Ready? I want to start with a very important word. Fun. Yes? F-U-N. Now, there's another really important word within fun. That word is F-U. This is what happens when you stop having fun in your workouts. You start saying F you and you do not have a good time. This is one of the biggest reasons why I have been stuck in mental block land trying to figure out why I cannot get myself to push through being uncomfortable. First of all, let me just say how happy I am to finally figure out what the hell was going on. But let me start on Tuesday. So Tuesday, I showed up to Central Park with Gotham City Runners, Josh's running team, to do hill repeats. So I showed up to do hill repeats. Instead of attacking every single hill repeat, I found myself running half of it, getting tired, and then jogging up the other half. And then being like, oh, I'm so tired. Which then made this go, oh, why is this happening? And I started going, F you, F you, F you, F you, F you, and I got frustrated. So on the way back from the hill workout, Josh was talking to me and he was explaining to me what he thought my mental block was. If you ever run a race and you go up the hill, and even before you get to the top, you already start to slow down. Yeah. Almost everybody does because they're waiting for the balance. Like to crest the top and mellow out. What you want to do is try and drive until you're at least 10 to 20 meters past the top. Oh. And then relax. That way you don't lose any speed. Your rhythm's the same. All you have to do is get your breath. Gotcha. The top of the hill portion is exactly the same thing as what your weekend is. Yeah. You get to a point you know you know that things are gonna get better as soon as you get over the top. Yeah. So you just slow down thinking, oh, if I slow down here, it's not that big a deal. You know? But when you race and you're trying to hold on, I mean you have to be able to hold it for that little bit longer each time. So then on Thursday when we were at the track, I was supposed to be doing a 300, 200, and then 100. So I was supposed to be doing them at a pace that I can hold for like four or five miles. Something that I know I can do. I can't do it comfortably, but I can do it. I couldn't even get through 300 meters on a track. That's not even a single lap around a track without stopping myself 200 meters in. And I got so frustrated and annoyed. And I kept thinking, what the hell is going on with me? Why is this so difficult? And that night, it finally occurred to me that I was no longer having fun. I was dreading my workouts. I put the goal to BQ ahead of the journey itself, and I have stopped being present. You cannot run unless you're present. We've all heard the saying, you have to run the mile you're in. For me, I can't even run the mile I'm in. I have to run the moment I'm in. I have to run the step I'm in. I have to run the 10 meters I'm in. So this last Sunday, I was doing a 10K. And Josh didn't give me anything. He didn't give me paces. He didn't tell me to run fast and get faster. He told me nothing, which to me said, Kelly, I want you to have fun when you run, which I was like, yay, have fun. I get to have fun, fun, which is like the one thing I can do. I love to have fun when I run. I love to get around people, be loud and obnoxious. So that's what I did. I towed the line, we took off, we hit the first mile and I was loud and I was like, woohoo, one mile and everyone's like being serious and running and we kept going and then I'm like we get to the hill and I'm screaming like Fuck you hill yeah and I'm having a great time and once I got to the top of the hill I kind of like looked down at my watch and I thought I'm exactly on track to the PR that I want let's do this the rest of the race was not fun <laughs> single painful step of that 6.2 mile run not fun awful terrible painful just miserable the rest of the day you feel so empowered and unstoppable when you push yourself to places that you don't think you can do that was a huge PR for me 
I mean, look at my past queens, my past 10K PR, which was an entire year ago. That was the last time I ran a 10K and raced it. And then look at my current 10K PR. That's what happened in an entire year when I worked my ass off. I think I finally learned that I have to stop waiting for running hard and running fast to be easy or comfortable and that running fast is always going to hurt because you're just getting stronger and you're running faster. And that was something that I, it took me a minute to figure out and to really like embrace. But now that we're here, like I'm ready to just embrace the pain, embrace the hurt and see what I'm capable of. I didn't set this goal to coast. I set a goal that scared the shit out of me because I actually don't think I can do it. But if it doesn't happen at Chicago, there will be another marathon. I will have another chance. And that's what makes accomplishing a goal that feels impossible. It could be your first 5K. It could be your first half marathon. It could be your first sub four hour marathon. It could be your first marathon. That's what makes setting these goals that feel so unattainable and so impossible and so scary. That's what makes them worth it. That's what makes the, the not fun parts of training worth it. That's what makes every single painful step worth it. It's pushing through those moments of doubt and pushing through the mental blocks. All you have to do is be a tiny bit stronger than you were yesterday. And sometimes that just means not giving up and not giving in and just sitting with something uncomfortable when you can't figure it out. And sometimes you just have to have fun. So here we go. My goal this week is to have fun amidst the misery and the pain and the discomfort. Be cure buff.